Welcome back to another quilt store. This is Village Dry Goods in Brigham City, Utah. This was a lovely shop and it's going to be near and dear to my heart for a very long time, which I'll explain more later. When I asked permission in the shop to do video, I got a chance to talk to the owner, Fran. Fran was lovely and she gave me permission and we had a chance to chat for a little bit, which was a lot of fun. And I asked her what was the best thing or the most unique thing about her shop. And she said, as far as products go, they're a very traditional, it's mostly traditional fabrics. They have a lot of reproductions. They have a lot of wool. But she said the very best thing about her shop is her employees. She said they're wonderful and it's just like family and her customers. She's heard stories of other people that talk about customers that are just insane to deal with. And she says, I don't have a bad apple in the lot. And that was really nice to hear because I think it probably has something to do with obviously the people in the area, but also just how the shop and the employees in the shop deal with pe people. I mean, I know some people are just hard to deal with, but anyway, it was lovely talking with Fran. Now this shop was not on my list of shops to stop at. In fact, this town wasn't a town we were supposed to be at at all. If you've watched us, you might remember last autumn, we had some problems with our truck and we had to have our transmission replaced. And on our trip to Texas, we had some other vehicle problems. So we ended up here in Brigham City and I was delighted to find out that where we were parked waiting for them to look at our truck, we were only two miles or two blocks away from a quilt shop. If that isn't a blessing, I don't know what is. So we walked down and we came to this quilt shop and it was just, uh, just a balm to my spirit to be able to be in here and enjoy the, enjoy the fabric, enjoy the company, enjoy the visit with Fran. It's just a chance to think about something other than wondering about our trip and wondering about our truck. So this was fantastic. Now we ended up being there when they were doing their open house for their upcoming classes. So the shop was quite busy. There were a lot of people in there looking at the samples for classes, signing up for classes, buying supplies for classes. That was fun too. It's a beautiful little shop. Not so little. It's not huge, but it's not little. Fran said that her employees make all of the, um, all of the sample pieces for her. You can see they must keep quite busy because there are a lot of samples. Now, I myself lean towards traditional quilts. I love traditional quilts. I love wool. And so uh, this felt like this is just my place. Good place to be stranded.
I've seen these bags before. I had never seen where someone had cross-stitched on them to make a design. I thought that was really clever. Had those patterns. And this is some of their samples for their classes. They had making your own quilted sneakers and a couple of the different bags and the little English paper piecing in cushion. I bet it's fun to take a class there. I would love to do that. And all those lovely threads for embroidery. fabric. They had a bunch of bee fabric and beehives. And since Utah is the beehive state, figured we kind of needed to go with that theme. I did like the quilt of the fabric with the bees. It's been quite a while since I've gotten any work done on our trick quilt. So I'm taking a few minutes today to get a little bit more done so that I can at least feel like I'm starting to make progress again. This block was actually, I'd had it done, but then I decided I didn't like part of the quilting. I had done a serpentine line all the way across this. I just figured that was an easy way to divide the space and get it quilted. And I didn't know what else to do. But then, looking at it, I thought it looked odd with the line going through the middle of the little squares. And so I did another one and I did the serpentine line up to the squares and then just went around like I did here. And I liked how that looked a lot better. So I actually pulled the stitches out of that or out of this one. So it does mean more starting and stopping, but to do this and then come around here on each of these, I think looks nicer. So I'm just doing that real quick and then I can be done with this little section. And then I can go on to the next section. First problem with projects like this that have gotten old is they still hang over your head. And of course, if you want to finish them, then they're going to keep hanging over your head as long as you have them. But then the other thing is they're not usually as motivating to work on anymore because they're not new and fun. And it's kind of like a, oh, I got to get this thing done. What someone has referred to before as the messy middle. It's not the fun starting stage. It's not the very end where you can see the end in sight and it's exciting to know you're finishing it. This is definitely the messy middle, although it's further along than it used to be. Just have to persevere through the rest of the messy middle and get this finished. It was nice to be working on the lighthouse block. Get on to the next one. 
uh, the messy middle was especially hard on that last block because I'd had to undo some of the stitching and so then it was going backwards and having to do work just to get to where I had them. So when I got that one done, I found, not surprisingly, that uh, taking action and getting that done, making progress had been motivating. So that made it just a little bit easier to work on the next one. Now I was a little worried about this one because you know, the straight line part of the quilting is easy and doing around the trees, but I knew I was going to be a little intimidated by the big open space on the center part of the block, on that applique block. Um, the applique blocks are the ones that make me feel like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up or I don't know exactly what I'm going to do that's going to look good. So it's really easy to get stopped by those things. Um, so trying not to let myself just sit there and think about it forever and just do it because getting it done and being able to enjoy it will definitely be better than trying to get it done perfectly and maybe never getting it done. And at first when I was working on this one, I was doing a really good job of recording and uh, here shortly as far, that's as far as I get. And then I forgot to get the video camera back out and so I was done. So I'm afraid we're gonna jump from working on just the bottom part to done here in just a second. Okay, this was the section that I was working on quilting. Again, I'm sorry, I'm afraid. I keep forgetting to get the video camera out when I'm working on it, but I have gotten it quilted. The trickier part was in the center because then it's like, I'm not sure exactly what to do, but I just kind of follow the texture of the clouds and just kind of stitched along it. Otherwise the trees, I just stitched around the trees and then of course the straight line stitching on the uh, border sections. So I've got that one done and on to the next one. And I went to pick this section my first thought had been, I need to do one that doesn't have applique block on it because I just want a simpler one to deal with. And then I thought, I don't want to just put that off and leave the hardest for last either though. So when this one, I pulled it up, um, it does have an applique block, but it is a smaller one. And it is much simpler than the last one I had done. There's not a lot of empty space that's going to need to be filled. And so I thought this is a good way to make progress, still work on an applique block. So I'm not doing the hardest thing necessarily, but I'm not doing the easiest either. Um, so I'm not feeling like I've just got that hanging over my head and it's gonna get harder as I go. This isn't the, the most difficult applique block by any means. I do have a couple that are gonna be, well, that I'm a little nervous about in the future, but at least I didn't just bail and not do any applique block. And so this was kind of nice because in a fairly short period of time, I got three of these sections done. That's definitely helping me feel like I'm making progress and making me feel a little more motivated to work on it. It is exciting seeing it up on the wall and looking at it and going, yeah, I really actually do like what I did. Next block or next chunk done. Got a little uh, wavy stitch and then outlines around the squares. Kind of outlined around a little drawing. So very basic again. So that's what I do. Around the trees and the little squares, I went with a little X. So again, one more chunk done. Don't remember how many have to go.